In the previous video, I provided an introduction to Argonne National Lab's hydrogen models. In this video, I'll provide a more in-depth look at the HD-SAM model and some scenario results. First, I'll give a quick overview of the model, then I'll describe three scenarios and show the respective results that were generated. As I explained in the previous video, the HD-SAM model incorporates economic data into the energy and emissions modeling provided through GREET to enable assessment of financial sustainability as well as environmental sustainability of hydrogen delivery pathways. Inputs to the model include market demand parameters, cost and performance data of delivery and refueling components, and economic and financial parameters. Outputs include levelized cost of hydrogen delivery, capital, operating, and maintenance costs of delivery components, annual and cumulative cash flows, and environmental metrics like energy use and emissions. Note that the delivery cost in HDSAM does not include the hydrogen production cost. The title worksheet contains a color coding key, similar to other models related to GREET. Blue indicates a calculated cell, and the formulas in these cells shouldn't be changed. Peach indicates that an input is required. Green indicates an optional input. Yellow indicates an informational cell. And orange indicates a drop-down menu. On the scenario worksheet, there are some market demand selections, delivery mode selections, a refueling station capacity selection, and storage options. Following a simulation run, you can view cost results, energy and GHG results, and cash flow results. If you want to explore or modify any of the underlying model data, you can find it on subsequent worksheets in the model. A few additional words about the state of the current hydrogen fuel market before I jump into the first scenario. Though the HD-SAM model allows modeling of delivery pathways to rural areas, in the near term hydrogen is more likely to be delivered to urban areas due to concentrations of population and infrastructure. Another point is that trucking is likely to be the only transmission mode until fuel volume grows enough to justify investment in pipeline transmission. Now the first scenario I'll describe utilizes a tube trailer to transmit gaseous hydrogen. Moving into the HD-SAM model, I'll start on the scenario worksheet and fill in the input parameters needed for a simulation run. I'll select Urban as the H2 market and use the city selector to find Sacramento, California. A couple boxes appear in the worksheet after the city selection's made. The first contains key delivery inputs and assumptions, which reports parameters related to the selected city, population, area, annual miles driven per vehicle, and distance from production to city, as well as fuel demand parameters and hydrogen vehicle fuel economy. The second box contains demand calculations, where you can find parameters related to how much hydrogen will go to fuel vehicles in your scenario. These parameters vary when the H2 vehicle market penetration is adjusted. The H2 vehicle market penetration is the fuel cell vehicle market penetration in a given urban area. And for this scenario, I'll set that at 1%. Next, I'll select the transmission mode to be tube trailer, which populates delivery mode calculations below the key input assumptions. Here's where you can find detail about how hydrogen is delivered within your selected city. Also note that the distribution mode auto-selected the tube trailer option, since mode switching between transmission and distribution is unnecessary in this scenario. I'll leave the dispensing rate at 300 kilograms per day. Select 700 bar cascade dispensing as the dispensing option and set the production volume at low. With these inputs selected, I'll click to calculate the model and generate results. This process might take a few minutes to complete, but for the video, I'll fast forward. On the scenario worksheet, the total delivery cost in dollars per kilogram is displayed above the key delivery inputs. In this scenario, it's 10.7. To view more detailed results, I'll first go to the results summary worksheet, and the table at the top of the sheet provides a delivery cost breakdown. 
The chart below shows that a good majority of the cost in dollars per kilogram is the result of capital investment. Moving to the Energy and GHG Results Worksheet, an overview chart shows energy use by delivery phase, broken out between upstream and on-site energy use, with the total energy use equating to 0.35 megajoules per megajoule. To the right is a similar chart for GHG emissions, showing a total of about 25 grams per megajoule. Then on the cash flow results worksheet, there are charts and tables showing annual cash flows and cumulative cash flows. Looking here at the cumulative cash flows chart, you can see that after initial investment is made, it takes close to a decade to reach a break-even point. For the second scenario, I'll go back to the scenario worksheet and I'll keep the city selection as Sacramento. This time I'll raise the H2 vehicle market penetration to 4% and select the transmission mode to be liquid H2 truck, which will auto select the same option for the distribution mode. I'll set the dispensing rate at 500 kilograms per day and I'll select 700 bar gas via pump as the dispensing option, and I'll set the production volume at mid. Now I'll click to calculate the model to generate results, again fast forwarding through the processing. On the results summary worksheet, the cost breakdown chart again shows the majority of the cost resulting from capital investment, and the total cost is $6.88 per kilogram. On the cash flow results worksheet, the cumulative cash flows chart shows a break-even point that comes slightly more quickly than in the previous scenario. For the final scenario, I'll choose Indianapolis, Indiana as the city selection. This time I'll raise the H2 vehicle market penetration to 10% and select the transmission mode to be pipeline. Note here that the distribution mode is not preset with the pipeline selection, but I'll set this to match the transmission mode. I'll raise the dispensing rate to 1,000 kilograms per day, and I'll select 700 bar cascade dispensing as the dispensing option. This time I'll set the production volume at high, and I'll click to calculate the model to generate results. On the results summary worksheet, the cost breakdown table reports a total cost of $5.38 per kilogram. And on the cash flow results worksheet, the cumulative cash flows chart shows a break-even point at about 10 years. This difference in break-even year between delivery modes is dependent on a number of factors, including the variation in the number of years required for infrastructure construction of each particular mode of transport, the rate of return as set in the model, and other financial assumptions. That concludes this video on the HDSAM model. Stay tuned for more videos coming soon, and thanks for watching.